up guys all right i'm going to show you how to do some of the mirror effects that you've seen on some of the travel vlogs uh, the first one is a uh, an effect where you just reflect the bottom part of the screen on the top a lot of times you see this with drone footage and so in this case i'm flying a drone towards the sun and so you've got this uh, cool effect where you've got some light cast on the uh, the water and then reflects up and it kind of has a nice little effect to it i'm also going to uh, do an effect where I just kind of blend it out or fade out. You can also fade in or out, either one. So let's go right into that. You're going to want to go into your stock library for uh, Resolve FX. Look for mirrors. I'll bring that over into one of your nodes. You're going to want to set up, if you're just going to want to set up this effect, then you're going to want to set up the mirror placement here to Kaleidoscope. Reflect that border. Your blend is zero. Your X position you're going to want to set so that you get a a uh, the perfect kind of mirror effect. So if you look closely, I've got this little uh, item here. I think it's I think it was a part of the island uh, that I was flying from. And so to get that just about perfect uh, for for this shot anyway, 0.212 is is where I want it to be. Uh, y position zero. Center size at 0.5. Um, Again, that that um, that allows you to get the perfect effect that you want, and you can play around with that and see all the other cool things you can get. Angle, you're going to want to have that at 90. Number of sides, also four. Now, this also gives you some kind of cool effects, and you can kind of see this could be really cool uh, depending on what you're trying to uh, accomplish. Maybe uh, the illusion of you flying into <laughs> this uh, pyramid or something. Okay. Well, anyway, for the effect I want to do, I'm just going to leave it at four. All right, so that's all you have to do to get this effect. Now, if you want to uh, fade it in or fade it out from the the, the standard image, uh, you're going to want to set up keyframes. So in my case, I'm going to fade out into the standard image. And so I'm going to click the button here so that I'm recording uh, keyframes. And the first one, just to make sure everything's set up, I'm going to go out to a point that I want to... Um, Let's see here. I don't know why I have an extra keyframe here. Not sure. Let's just delete that. Okay. So you're going to want to go out here to the first part that you're um, you want to start to fade out. So in this case. Uh, I just moved something around and then moved it back to default so that I, it would register a keyframe. So from this point is where it's going to start to blend in. So you go to the part that you want to finish uh, your your fade or your blend. And in this case, I just selected a, a you know a location about three seconds out. And at this point, you're going to want to set the blend to uh, one. It's going to create another keyframe, and as you can see, it automatically creates a dynamic keyframe that allows it to blend out into the sunrise. Okay? Okay, so let's go to the second clip. Now, the second clip is just a, a standard GoPro image uh, that I took while, when I was outside of uh, Tokyo. <clears throat> and in this case, the key thing you're going to want to do is you're going to need Sapphire. So the Sapphire plugin, you're going to want to select S blur mode curves. So once you drag that in, you're going to want to set up your default settings, which is reflect for X wrap. Okay. Always set those up. I don't think there's ever been a time I didn't need that. And I'd recommend you do that before you start your, your um, recording of your, your keyframes. Otherwise you have to set it up for each one. So on the first one here, I'm going to start recording keyframes. I'm just going to click on uh, number two only. And this is where you can kind of have some fun. You can kind of play around with different effects to see what, what makes sense or what looks good. In my case, I kind of wanted to bring in the left side a little bit. So I set that at 0.312. And then I wanted to bring the top down a little bit. So the other corners I'm, I'm completely okay with. And so since I was walking very slowly, you kind of got this effect here. Let's see where it actually looks like it's kind of moving uh, away from at the point that... Uh, We've got the mirror effect, which is kind of cool. And you can do that on any of the um, directions, top, bottom, right, left. All right, let's go to our third clip. 
Okay, so this is a aerial of the city of Seattle. And I actually took a time-lapse um, image of, of, of that uh, skyline. And so the first part of these, these keyframes, you can just ignore. That's just part of the uh, slide. Uh, but in order to get this effect where you've got the three um, kind of in one S blur mode curves, again, you need the Sapphire plugin. And so once you load that, you're going to want to set a keyframe. So ignore the keyframes here to the left because those are really related to um, the, the slide effect. Uh, so this is the first keyframe that's really impacted by this. So in this case, I set a static keyframe. So you just um, uh, press the record key here to start recording your keyframe. And then you, you go in here and set your settings. So in this case, I had to go down and um, set the crop <clears throat> so that I got that effect. So very similar to the previous tab, uh, you do the top so that I got the clouds kind of overlaying here. And then the right and the left are what gave me the, uh, the additional uh, images for the, uh, the uh, sky tower. Okay. Now if it creates a dynamic uh, keyframe the first time, you can just right click and change um, uh, and click change to static keyframe. And the reason being is you want to just keep it at that position for the entire uh, transition. I'm going to turn off this transform um, a node because it has some special effects and I don't want to confuse people. Down the road here, I basically, or you know, uh, a few seconds later, I did this effect where it basically inverted on top of each other. In this case, again, it's just another static keyframe. And all you had to do here was adjust the, uh, the crop. In this case, I think I just, uh, yeah, just adjusted the top part of the crop to get that effect. Okay. So very straightforward there, two static keyframes. Now in between I had this effect, which I call transform. And all it is, is an effect where it spins, let's go, it spins the, uh, the image that's on the screen. So all that is, is the S-Blur motion effect that's under the Sapphire plugins. So right here, in my case, I set a keyframe at about the time I want to begin the effect. Uh, so I set the Z distance or 2Z distance to 0.8 to kind of give this zoom zooming effect. And then I also If we go down to this keyframe, right where I want to do the transformation, I then set from Z distance, distance to 0.8. I pressed um, 2Z distance to 0.1, rotate to 90, and I think that is it. Yep, that's it. So that's all you have to do. And the fact that it's a dynamic keyframe, it kind of creates this effect where it, it zooms in or it zooms in, twists, and then I twist it back out. So if you look at the keyframe down here, it basically is an inversion from the, uh, the very first one. So I've got it going back to uh, from Z distance to 1, to Z distance to 1, and uh, everything else is at 0 or default, okay? That is it. So, hey, if you got any questions on anything I just covered, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. Peace.